Yes, thank you, uh, John. Uh, difficult task because only 3% of you uh, do use bevacizumab, so I think you are all wrong. And uh, I'm going to try to show you why you should use more bevacizumab uh, in your practice. And I always say if I had a kidney cancer with metastatic disease, I would probably start my treatment with bevacizumab. And I think that's what I would do. So when you look at NCCN guidelines, I, I think we have three recommendations which are in the same level. And the question for me is why not to use bevacizumab? And the question is, I think, mainly because you don't know the drug. So um, what do we know? I mean, we know that VGF inhibition is key in RCC. And uh, bevacizumab is certainly the most specific VGF inhibitor with safety and uh, toxicity only related to VGF inhibition uh, with this drug. And uh, Manuel, I gave an excellent talk at ESMO recently showing that we don't know anything about the activity of the other targets and VGF. So probably, I mean, what we want to do is to target VGF. And what we do with TKI, we use dirty drug. So uh, of course, VGF inhibition with this drug is the main driver for efficacy. But all the other targets we use, I mean, produce toxicity. And we know all this toxicity. We know about hand food syndrome. We know about a change in hair color, which is sometimes not trivial. And for me, it's very important because with this drug, you are not able to appreciate good wine. That's finished for you. So why should we use this drug? And the question is, why do we miss the good target? And we know that it's very dangerous when you use a target to miss the good target. And that's something that very, a lot of people know about that. So we have to use VGF as a good target. So one of the reasons why probably you don't use bevacizumab is because interferon adds toxicity. And there is no question. I mean, interferon adds some toxicity, especially at the beginning of treatment. But the good thing, and if you look at literature, is that when toxicity occurs, it's very manageable with dose reduction. And when the, in the Avarant trial, we did dose reduce. And what we showed is that with dose reduction, we have very rapid improvement of the toxicity. No question here. And in addition to that, those patients where we had to dose reduce had a better overall survival at the end than the patient where we don't have to dose reduce. So toxicity with interferon is probably related to some more efficacy. And I don't think we have to be afraid by this toxicity with interferon here. So probably another argument is that bevacizumab is expensive. And that's probably true. Bevacizumab is expensive. That's probably one reason why many countries have not approved the drug. But if you look at the at the Avoran trial, I mean, most of the patients have stopped bevacizumab at one year, and we still have an overall survival on the PFS, which is very significant. So if you put all this together, at the end, I mean, the cost of the drug is not so expensive, considering the benefits that you will get with this drug here. So why should I use bevacizumab? I think bevacizumab, first of all, is active. So this is uh, the pivotal trial which, which led to registration in Europe, so-called the Avoran trial that we did in Europe. Uh, it's now, I mean, seven years ago that we published the, the paper in The Lancet. And when you look at the data, I mean, bevacizumab is interferon produce a 10.2 months PFS. So remember what was in the COMPASS trial. I mean, it's less than 10.2 months. So we are going to tell me, I mean, that's such a single trial, and uh, why are you so sure that it works? It's not sure that we have less evidence with TKI. So Camillo showed a lot of patients treated with, uh, with uh, sunitinib. I think we have a lot of evidence that uh, uh, bevacizumab is interferon is active. So first of all, we have two large phase three. And both myself and Brian was in the audience, I mean, conducted two large phase three showing that bevacizumab is active in combination with interferon, much better than interferon alone. We also had a very recent phase three with, again, a large number of patients that Brian published recently called the INTERACT trial, where the control arm was bevacizumab plus interferon, showing still a large activity of the drug. And this is what we showed in this, in this study. 9.3 months PFS for interferon plus bevacizumab in nowadays uh, atmosphere. So it's still a very active regimen here. And then you would tell me, I mean, how could I think that it's better than sunitinib? I don't know if it's better than sunitinib, but at least in the only randomized study where we did compare the two drugs, 
I mean, Bema Sumab has been better than Sunitinib. So this was, of course, not the goal of this study. It's, of course, a randomized phase two. But still, I mean, in these studies that we did in France, called the Torah Vatrium, where the goal was to look at the Temsorolimus plus Bevacimab combination, we had two control arms, Sunitinib and Bevacimab plus interferon. And when we look at the data here, that's what came out. So Bevacimab plus interferon in this study was 16.8 months, while Sunitinib was 8.2 months. So it certainly doesn't mean that uh, Bevacimab is much better than Sunitinib, but at least there are some patients where it's better. And in this study, it was better for patients who receive Bevacimab plus interferon here. So do you think it's only in one study that we have this kind of, of, uh, of results? The, the answer is no. I mean, I like this study, which was recently published by, uh, by Melisha. 147 patients in a large phase two. Bevacimab plus low-dose interferon, 15.6 months PFS. Never seen such a PFS in 150 patients. So think about, I mean, this combination, and think about you have a kidney cancer. Why should not you use this combination for you? Overall survival exceeding 30 months. Of course, it's not a randomized study, and that's certainly the pity of this study, but it's a very convincing evidence that this combination is very active in kidney cancer. So let's look at what we have for Bevacimab plus interferon. So these are all the trials we have with these drugs, Bevacimab plus interferon, nine million three times a week, plus Bevacimab 10 milligrams every two weeks. And you can see that the number of patients is quite high. 1,300 patients treated in this different phase three. Almost 10 months PFS on a consistent manner in this, with this drug here. And then if we add uh, low-dose interferon, maybe even, maybe even bevacimab alone, as you have seen in the best trials that David McDermott reported at ASCO GU, I mean, it's still a very consistent and active drug in this setting here. So which is the ideal patient to receive Vivacimab plus interferon? I think probably almost every patient could be a good candidate. So certainly patients with more indolent disease are excellent candidate, and every patient where you think that interferon could be a, a, good, a good treatment, I think adding Vivacimab will add some efficacy and might be very beneficial for your patients. But I think if you look at intermediate risk group patients, it's still very beneficial to give Bevacimab plus interferon. So that was in via Voren trials, the intermediate risk group patient, and you can see that the hazard ratio is very high in comparison with Bevacimab, 10.2 months compared with 4.5 months just in the intermediate risk group patient here. So no question, I think, I mean, this regimen is also active in intermediate risk group, not only in good risk group as people think it might be here. So that are the subgroup analysis for overall survival in the Avoran trial. And you can see that almost every subgroup that we have looked at in this forest plot benefit from combination with interferon plus bevacizumab. So the only one which is very underrepresented in this, uh, in this study is the poorest group patients. I would never recommend to use bevacizumab plus interferon in poorest group patients. And, but in the first patients that uh, John presented, I certainly would have selected bevacizumab. As, uh, as the best treatment to give. So the second point I think we are concerned about is patients with liver meds. And in this analysis here that you can see on the, on the bottom of the slide here, those patients who have liver meds, at least in an exploratory analysis we did in the Averant trial, seem not to benefit so well from Bevacimab plus interferon. So I would certainly be a little cautious by using uh, the drug in patients with bulky disease and liver meds. And when you look at the median overall survival uh, in patients uh, without liver meds, it's very significant. With liver meds, it's much less significant here. So I would be very cautious about using the drug as first choice in, in uh, liver meds patient here. So if I had to conclude uh, my talk, I think Bevacizumab targets specifically VG VGF pathway. And I think that what we want to do in kidney cancer so I think there is no reason not to use this drug because that's probably the best drug to inhibit VEGF here. Bevacimab plus interferon has demonstrated consistently in many studies efficacy, at least as good as TKIs, no question here. 
The vastus map is interferon is easily manageable. Of course, I mean, you have to deal with uh, IV injection and with three times a week injection sub-Q. It's very easy to, to teach patients to, to do their own administration of interferon. And we do much difficult thing in, in cancer actually here. Yeah. I think Bevacizumab could be offered almost to every patient. And I think it's certainly a good choice if you can do that. And finally, I think Bevacizumab is, is very convenient for your patients. And question here is, uh, when you use TKI, I mean, you will have a lot of phone calls, and we all know how difficult it is to deal with toxicity of TKI, and many of us are trying to set up, I mean, phone uh, conversation with our patients. And just with Bevacizumab, it's completely different, and I know that, I know that Tom Hudson will be happy, because then, when you use Bevacizumab, they meet your nurses, and that my nurse is in Gustav Rossi, and then I think it's very convincing that you should use Bevacizumab. Thank you very much. <laughs>